Ahsoka, and now the voice is in position, now what we do? The previous video I showed you, just like in the other series I just posted two days ago, I showed you the first area I used in video number one, now I'm going to show you the second area I used in video number two, Un bel vidremo. How to go about, well, I have to explore, my voice is vast, I don't have many options, I have many options, but the area has requests and requirements. So first and foremost, the first note. Not every opera singer knows that, I suppose. In order to sing the note, you have to attack the note in the very beginning. You cannot slide it up. I said it last time. <coughs> and there's very many ways to do that. That was one. And the other one is... <coughs> What's the difference? First I position the voice. And then I put the air in. And the second one, I put the air in first. No, the voice is positioned, but first I put the air in, and then I emitted the sound. Let's do another one. <coughs> Even better, in the beginning, I positioned the voice very much to the front, in my head, yeah, in my mind. And then I blew the air in. Can you hear the difference? Of course not. <laughs> I don't expect you to. Can the opera singer hear the difference? Now I said in the beginning, the last time, because it went a little bit strenuous. How about I do whatever God tells me? God? Let me do, just open my mouth and see what's coming up. See, that's not how it works. One must make choices. So it's a heavy idea. Can I keep it light? I don't know. Let me see what I can I'll come up with. Let me see what the idea tells me as I vocalize on it. Yeah, if you could hear what I do. Up and down, back and forth. It goes so very many different places. Verschönerung. La belleza. Embellecimiento. Make it beautiful. Back and forth. So I could have it lighter, but I cannot sing it light, light, light. Although it is light. Yeah, usually it's sung by lighter sopranos who don't sing over the orchestra. And they have to push it very much to keep the volume up, which makes it not that pretty. They cannot do any varieties, variants. They cannot do embellecimientos, beautify the area, because they just have to push the voice up there. And then they're tired, exhausted for the next three to four days, or five even. See, this is what I do. What does the area tell me? What can I do? And of course, now it's time to look at the lyrics, which is easy. Now, today I have my video on my iPhone as I speak on my iPhone too, so I paused it. So I do not listen to it uh, like I did last time on my iPad. I just keep it out of my head. So I know the lyrics. Let me see if I can do it. See, that is a different challenge. That is not a vocalization. That is an aria. That is completely different. Because in order to sing also the lyrics, meaning the consonants, I have to push the ear in place. That's what you can do. You can't slide it. Now, am I bored to show you? Because I'm boring the whole wide world doing these videos. Or am I not? What am I showing? I think I'm showing it's complicated. A lot of different considerations. I cannot slide the note. Because now in my technique, that would be sloppy. It's different than my previous video when I made the choices to slide the note just so to keep the voice in the space. Back to the recording. It's a Maria Callas recording from Yeah, Puccini Aria Un Bel Dividremo. And it's lamentable. Because she doesn't attack the note, the very first one. She slides it. Oh, that's so wrong. You have to do. Oh, you have to have a technique. No, my mouth is not really wide open. Because it's not really that. Oh, it is high. Let me see. Oh, no. And here I need an horizontal space. Oh, but not now. 
much. More like let it flop down. One of those fallacies of opera singing technique. To sing high notes and let your jaw flop down. Ah! Hmm. What yeah, about flapping down? How do you flap it down? Ah! Okay, it's not really that loud. Oh, you can see mouth wide open from singers who never existed. Yeah, like the bottle. There's no way you can sing the other with the mouth so wide open. But it looks so nice on I mean, the film, on the video, doesn't it now? So you gotta be careful. So when I record an album, I record myself first in my practice. I listen to what I'm doing when I practice the aria before even recording an album. I sing it and then I listen. What am I doing? Well, instead of a teacher external to me, I am my own teacher. And then I correct if there would be anything to correct. This is what I've been doing like the entire time. After the first phrase, because I already did the first a few times here in this recording, I'm doing it out of my head and looking into the area what it requires, what choices could be made. At this point, since I vocalize over the area to actually sing it, perform it, I think about the lyrics because there is a distinction to be made. When is she strong? When is she powerful or powerless? When is there excitement and sadness? How is she feeling? Is this a real statement? Is it just uh, wishing to believe? Is it some delirium state she is in? How do I perform it? Is I vocalize? I, tom I take in consideration a few items of those because I know the lyrics of this aria. And I'm playing along and around with my voice like you have no clue. It's absolutely astonishing and devastatingly beautiful. I don't really want to vocalize more you one more. Let me see. I mean, I do, but here on the video. Let me see. Be that the movie again adjusted the volume. It was a very a piano, it was a mezzo piano, and it was a mezzo forte interpretation. It's Vedi, is waiting for the boat, and there it is on the horizon. Can you see? There is the boat. Now, is it the wishful thinking, hesitant Vedi in the beginning, or is it the asserting? Look, there is the boat. Vedi. Or maybe it is imploring as she talks to her maid. It has to come. He has to come. Vedi. Imploring. Please, Vedi. Meaning, Vedi means, can you see it? See, I'm making considerations. And of course, as I vocalize, I don't have just one note or two notes. One phrase, I have many. So there should be dynamics. All for the all piano in this particular area would not work out. Yeah, I, I could do almost all piano in Don Delieta because she is fabulous, she's weak and dying. That's different. Yeah, with a little exception on the high note, the first phrasing of the high note, the second note. 
Yeah, I made those choices as I have been performing Don Delieta from La Boheme, the other Mimi Aria. Yeah, the second one, not the third one. So, what? Yes, as I learned Mimi, I actually, in my very studio, I sang the entire opera. Well, I just went through it. No, the entire book. To get to know. I took the book, I put on a CD, yeah, I sang with the score. It, it wasn't about singing, it was about getting to know and getting a feel. What Mimi is all about. People don't do that, why wouldn't they? It's a must. In profound, intrinsically deep characters like Mimi. It's Verismo. Verismo requires astute analysis. No, I have so much to say. Just give me a topic, give me an, um, give me an opera, and I tell you what. It doesn't happen as much in bel canto. There are different types and considerations to be made. What? No one knows that. Why not? I don't know. I just listen to the music. Isn't that what the teachers also tell you? Did I say Tito Capibianco is stage director? No, he's vocal teacher, right? What is he again? No, he is stage director. I was right. It doesn't matter, so... <clears throat> yeah, right, stage director. So all these little things I take into account. And how does my voice feel? Not too strenuous, not too light, just right. I am Princess Ilka. <laughs>